So with the release of GPT-4, I thought it'd be interesting to review this paper, Visual Chat GPT, which is a really cool paper showing you how you can make ChatGPT accept image as input by having something called a prompt manager managing the interaction between ChatGPT and visual foundation models like pixel to pixel or stable diffusion. And according to the authors, that allows ChatGPT to take in as input images, also ask um, visual questions, uh, ask for visual editing instructions, give fee uh, provide feedback to the model, and get results. Really interesting paper. They argue that training a multimodal model is computationally expensive. And also, if you want to add a new modality, like if you want your model to be able to handle video, you have to retrain the model on that modality, video, for example, which is suboptimal. So why not use this approach of prompt manager, where ChatGPT can leverage the VFMs and receive their feedback in an iterative manner until it meets the requirements of the users or reaches the ending condition. We show an overview of Visual ChatGPT. Essentially, the problem manager manages four kind of like core aspects. The first one is system principles, which is just a basic set of basic rules for Visual ChatGPT, like handling file name sensitivity or defining whether or not ChatGPT needs a VFM to answer a certain query. Uh, it also handles the history of the dialogue, which they define here as just, you know, the eighth round of conversation as the string concatenation of previous question answer bears. So you have the history of the dialogue in question here. You have the actual VFMs, which is the combination of a bunch of models like picks to picks or stable diffusion. And then you have the actual query. Like in this example, you have the couch here, and then you have a query about replacing the sofa with a desk and then make it like a watercolor painting, right? And all of that goes into the prompt manager. And then the prompt manager will interact with ChatGPT. So first things first, you define whether or not you're going to use a VFM. And if no, you just give an output. And if it is going to use a VFM, then there's a set of um, extra steps in order to give an answer. We have two things to take into consideration. You have the provision of intermediate answers by the VFMs. Essentially, they say here that when handling a complex query, Visual ChatGPT will try to obtain the final answer step by step by invoking different VFMs logically, thus producing multiple intermediate answers. And with the reasoning, they say that to solve complex questions, uh, Visual ChatGPT may require collaboration of multiple models. So for the eighth round of conversation, uh, you will have all the previous reasoning histories from those invoked VFMs. So for complicated questions, you combine VFMs, and then you step-by-step -step provide answers to the user. So in this figure three, they give an overview of how the problem manager manages those four different core aspects of the architecture. So for the system principles, you have three elements to take into consideration. Whether or not ChatGPT is going to use a VFM to answer the question, right? The sensitivity to the file name, the format, the allowed formats for um, reasoning. So you have three reasoning formats. You have thought, like, do I need to use this tool? Action, uh, do this. And action input, what that action will take as an input, like an image, an image with a query, etc. Then for the VFM part, you have four different elements to take into consideration. You have name, which is just the abstract of the overall function for each VFM. For example, answer question about the image. You have usage, which describes just the scenario where the VFM should be used. They give an example where pixel to pixel is suitable for changing the style of an image, for example. And then you have the inputs and outputs, which is just describing the formats for inputs and outputs that are required by each VFM. And then optionally, you have an example, because they argue that for complicated questions, um, it's good to have an input template on how to deal with those complicated questions. Now, for handling the user query part, the prompt manager will do two things. First, ViewChatGPT generates a unique file name with the UUID, a universally unique identifier, and you have the forcing of VFM thinking. Now, this part is about um, forcing ChatGPT to use the VFM tools instead of just imagination. And provide specific outputs rather than generic responses. So you try to force it to use the VFM model and not imagine the response. And, and you try to force it to give concrete objective outputs rather than generic responses. So they, they have this really interesting figure where they demo some of the dialogues that were generated with the visual ChatGPT model, 
where a person is saying something like, I like drawing, but I'm not good at drawing. Can you help me? Like draw an apple. And then the model says, sure, I can help you. Here's the image of a, that I generated for you. So the image generation, right? And then the person inputs something they drew and they want to improve over that. So they say something like, this is my sketch of an apple. Can you please help me to improve it? And then the model says, yeah, I generate a new image based on your sketch. And then the person says, can you make this image into a watercolor painting? So there's a process of transforming the things that are being created in the conversation, which for me is just mind blowing. And they show different examples of how these things are happening in the model that I thought were just incredible, really impressive stuff. It's a really cool paper. I definitely advise you to check it out. Uh, they obviously, as always, there's a limitation to this approach. And they say that, you know, it depends on ChatGPT and depends on visual foundation models, right? You do too much prompt engineering. There's limited real-time capabilities uh, because, you know, the architecture relies on this integration of all these different things with the visual foundation models and the prompt manager, etc. And you have the token length limitation, which is associated with the token limitation of ChatGPT. And then you have security and privacy issues because, you know, the ability to easily plug and unplug foundation models may raise security and privacy concerns, particularly for remote models accessed via APIs. However, overall, I thought it was a really cool paper. And now that we're seeing GPT-4 uh, being becoming more mainstream and people getting getting this idea of what multi-models can be, I think these approaches are going to be more and more common and they open a door for really, really cool applications specifically for learning. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Cheers.